context of white supremacy, Gusty Renegade, in for another broadcast, hopefully to share constructive information on the system of white supremacy racism. Uh, now, again, Gusty does not have a, you know, stunning, attractive personality, not super intelligent or wealthy or anything that people would just be clamoring, got to hang out and kick it with Gus T. Uh, we have lots of saboteurs in the cows audience, so I do not promote guests, and this has been long running for years where they go and sabotage our guests, white and non-white. So I don't tell folks in advance. Uh, our guest for today would have been those like, oh, man, you should tell everyone, particularly the people who follow the Catherine Massey Book Club. Reading nonfiction more important than watching television cannot be stressed enough. You would not be here if it were not for the Catherine Massey Book Club uh, and particularly read about things that important events. I just said yesterday they have books about uh, January 6th. We read one at the beginning of the year in the book club. There are many others. Read about, certainly, Jeff Dahmer. They have all kinds of books about actual activities and things that have happened, most of which directly deals with white supremacy racism. That's how we got to this here broadcast today. And certainly, Things that happen in your geographic location. We're talking about Columbine today. If Gusty, if I was born in Colorado or hung out there, like if I lived in Colorado as opposed to Washington State, oh man, Gusty, you better be a scholar on the Columbine shooting. I wouldn't care if I moved there last year. Like, man, all that stuff is moldy. That happened like 24 years before I got it. <laughs> You better become an expert, especially if you're going to be there for a length of time. You have children there. And other, oh, yeah. Get to studying. It's even better if you don't know anything about all of that. Oh, still learning. Still learning. Certainly, if you are an attempted parent with everything that has transpired, School year just started. If you are an attempted parent, you should know quite a bit about Columbine. That is for sure one to discuss with your offspring, unfortunately, because they probably know about Columbine, unfortunately. That's going to come up in the broadcast today, but whew, invest the time. And that could be a family project. Invest that time even before you have offspring. In fact, that's what I would say, like, hey, sit down together. So we're going to have children. Are we really going to send our black, non-white offspring, are we really going to send them to be classmates, Reb, Dill? That's the best plan that we got in 2025. Let's study Columbine a little bit before we produce these black children. Let's, let's study a little bit and see. This is the best that we can do in 2025. And then, in fact, as you're studying Columbine, lift up, glance at the newspaper, Colt 45 Gray in Georgia. Just glance. Take, and then take a glance, really probably your school district, wherever you happen to be across the U.S., east to west coast, in between, glance and see if they've had any swatting incidents, threats against the school, bomb threats. They gotta do. They gotta do the shame walk for an 11 year old in your jurisdiction because they threatened to bomb the school. Things of that nature that all of that would be worthy of discussion way before we get to the bedroom. 
might even damper some of the enthusiasm for getting to the bedroom because we got serious problems. I said that yesterday. Got an AR-15 into the high school in Georgia. That's Colt 45 Gray for people maybe hearing this some years later. Colt Gray is the lad in Georgia. 14, I believe, went shot, killed four people at the school. I think at least two of them are non-white, shot others. School just started in custody. His uh, attempted father, Colin Gray, criminally charged for negligence. They got video of them out hunting, bang, bang, so proud. I asked, how did he get an AR-15 into the school? Like, we just did the 25-year anniversary of, Col- of Columbine. We're supposed to be way better, have refined our skills for child safety at this point. How on earth did he get an AR-15 into the school? I thought, and I at least for a moment, they, a listener said, well, maybe he broke it down. You know, they got the verdict. You can break it down pretty quick, reassemble it, boom, 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 and then go get the killing. No. He had the version that did not break down, according to AP News reports. So how did he get an AR-15 into the school in a backpack? (sighs) Anyway, a few more seconds before we have our guest. I cannot encourage enough, along with reading, you can go back in the archives and hear when we had Jeff Cass as a guest on the program. Uh, You can hear we had Peter Langman as a guest on the program. They are both classified as white. Uh, Also, we had Dr. Angeline Spalding Flowers. Uh, She's been a guest repeatedly. In fact, uh, we had her uh, back on the program at the beginning of this calendar year uh, because the school shootings have been so frequent, ceaseless. Uh, We talked about the, uh, I guess, what would we say, growing trend maybe because at the time it was the Michigan shooting incident with the Crumblies where the parents are being criminally charged and all of that's you know still pending uh, and he's already been convicted we were talking about that case and some of the others but Colt 45 Gray hadn't even happened and prosecuting these parents like oh man if Columbine were to happen now The Harrises and the Klebols better have a great criminal attorney. Man, see if you can find Johnny Cochran's cousin, something, because, whoo, I think now they would have been charged. That would have made things kind of sloppy for sloppy for Jefferson County Sheriff's Office because, man, you all kind of knew that these folks were dangerous, and what did you all do? Like, it would have been a very different world, but I think if that were to happen now, they would have been criminally prosecuted, all four of them. Must see TV out in the right. Forget prime time. Forget all of that and the show toppers. And the, did you see the, the prosecution of the Klebolds and that we maybe wouldn't have had that lame book that we read? No lame documentary. She wouldn't be out giving speaker. I don't even – I had to think about that because I could see where – even if they did get criminally prosecuted, Sue Klebo could still bounce back and be doing her speaking tours. And you know. Anyway, you can check that all that out in the archives from just last. That's what we were doing this time last year, Sue Klebo, Biography Kings. As I said, we had Jeff Cass and Peter Langman, uh, Dr. Angel and Spalding Flowers. Like We'll have quite a little treasure trove uh, of content related to school shootings and then specifically – Columbine. We even talked about all of the fanboy behavior where people celebrating and worshiping these racist cowards out in Colorado. We've had 25 years of worshiping racist cowards in Colorado, all around the world, worshiping white cowards. If you need something else to read, 20 years of school-based mass shootings in the U.S. That is Dr. Angelin Spalding Flowers' text, which is phenomenal. Can't recommend enough. She was here two times, 
to discuss, which whew, gets right to the heart of the school shootings. Anywho, let's see. Uh, I believe, all righty, we should be right on time. We'll see if we can nab our guest for the broadcast and get to it for attempted parents listening closely, hopefully constructive. Let's see. Hello. Uh, greetings, Mr. Scholes. Are you with us? Yes, yes. Awesome. Did, did you need any more time, or are you I'm good. I'm awesome, good. spectacular? Uh, for our listeners, so honored to have as a guest on the context of white supremacy for the evening, today's date, for autumn. What a way to start the new season. Sunday. September 22nd, 2024, so I have been told the father of Isaiah Shoals, one of the 13 individuals killed during the April 20, 1999 massacre at Columbine High School, 12 of them children this program certainly dedicated to the memory of Isaiah Shoals. Again, so proud to have as our guest this evening, joining us live from Tennessee, our guest, Mr. Michael Shoals. Mr. Shoals, you can hear me okay, sir? Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much for uh, just sharing a little bit of your time with us uh, this Sunday evening uh, to discuss what I think is such an important issue, probably one of the most uh, pivotal events of the last 50 years, uh, the Columbine Massacre. Uh, you founded the organization Let's Stomp Out Hate in response to your son's murder. Uh, anything else that you would like to share with our listening audience before we get started, just who you are and the work you've been doing for the last 25 years? Well, my name is uh, Michael Show, and I uh, I started this Those police officers or deputy sheriffs. I'm a business owner. I uh, have been for years. But I started this organization because I'm tired of people dying for no reason. I mean, you know, especially our children. I mean, look at what's going on today, you know. So, I mean, something needs to be done about it. I mean, and that's why I accepted this, you know, this opportunity on your show. We appreciate. So, sorry, sir. Go ahead. No, please continue, sir. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, you know, I know where all of these parents and family members are right now, you know, due to all these school shootings, that's the recent school shooting. I mean, enough is enough. You understand? We need to come together as a village. Until we do that, this this will keep happening. It will keep happening. And we're going to have to come together as a village. I mean, for one thing, I mean, we're running around talking about ethnic group. Well, when it all come around to it, we all brothers and sisters. No matter how you look at it, we all brothers and sisters. And that's because of humanity. We are brothers and sisters of humanity. And we don't need to start thinking like that if we want changes to be made. Mm. Again, Mr. Michael Scholes joining us live from Tennessee. Uh, I'm sure we have some younger listeners who are probably born years, could even be decades at this point, after uh, the Columbine massacre. Uh, for people who maybe just know some of the tidbits, what they've heard, seen in passing. Uh, can you tell us about your son, Isaiah, who he was? Just well, tell us about uh, Isaiah. My, my son, Isaiah, was a beautiful person. I mean, he was smart, athletic. I mean, you know, he was good looking. You know what I'm saying? He was, I mean, he had everything that he needed to make it to the next level. And on top of that, he had his father, which I was going to, you let him take over my business once he got out of out of school. I mean, he could have did it right out of high school, 
but he didn't want to do that. He wanted to go, uh, go on to, you know, college. And I, you know, I agreed to let him do that. But uh, as we know, he never made it. He was killed three weeks before he was supposed to graduate. So, I mean, you know, and that's ridiculous. That's a shame, you know, that the world can be so sick and evil. And until we come together, it's gonna, we're going to continue to have these problems. I will continue to say this because we're going to have to come together. In the documentary film, 13 Families, they visit with the families, the relatives of the 13 victims who were killed in the Columbine shooting. And one of Isaiah Scholl's relatives in the film, she shared that weeks before the Columbine massacre, uh, Isaiah went to the hospital and it was stress related. And I pause with that was, is that, is that accurate? Did he go to the hospital due to stress just before the massacre? Well, it, it, you know, he was uh, he was having problems. I mean, you know, at, at one time where he was over, you know, over exhausting with the weights, and you know what I'm saying. In the rec room, he was over exhausting himself. You know what I mean? And you know, he was. It was just one of those things. But I mean, it was nothing. You know, it was nothing but a checkup. You make sure he was okay. So I mean, well, I mean, I can understand why it was this on on point. I mean, because my son, you know, I, to be honest with you, let's start it from where it really happened. I mean, for one thing, these schools are a whole lot responsible for what's going on today because of the separation that they have in these schools. I mean, there's no reason this school should have let those children walk around, you know, totally assaulting the kids, the kids of color. I'm going to put it that way. And they were letting those particular children walk around with these trench coats on, dictating what happened in this school. They were throwing these children in locks, I mean, throwing them in the trash cans, throwing them off the edge of the, the ledge where, you know, the sidewalks were. They was throwing, locking them up in their lockers, and wasn't anything said about it. And it just so happened one day they made that attempt on his sister and his brother, younger brother, and he confronted the he confronted them, and, and of course, they got into it, and they uh, got in a scuffle, a pretty big scuffle, and a... Uh, from that point on, it kept leading to that point. That's why I know that they're talking about this. These two children, well, of course, they might have they might have had something to do with it, but they're not the only conspirators of this thing that went on, and the school allowed it. So, I'm almost positive that the schools today is not much different because this is still going on. And so, you know, that's what I'm talking about. We need to start making a difference. And I always have said, if you want something to change, you're going to have to stir the dirt up around it if you want it to grow. Because if you let it get crushed and hard, it's going to die just like a weed. So if you want something to grow into something positive, you're going to have to treat it that way. And that's where we're going to have to start doing our children. I'm talking about us coming together as the village. That's what I'm talking about. Mm. You were very adamant after the murders in saying that your child, Isaiah, his murder specifically, this was a hate crime. Uh, do you still think that that's most that, accurate, that that was a hate crime? Yes, yeah, most definitely. That's most definitely the truth. I mean, I'm going to put it this way. It's not what I feel today. It's what's real. And that's real, that it was a, a, a most definite hate crime. I mean, these children, and it's been proven that when they came into that cafeteria where my son was supposed to be eating that day, but he was upstairs in the library. 
uh, helping one of his uh, friends with an essay. You know, at the end of the year, they, you know, they was trying to get it together, yes, and they sir. was upstairs in the library. And when they came in that cafeteria, they were saying, "Where's that little nigger?" Let's just go and call it what it is. Where's that little nigger? That's who they was. That's what they were saying. They were talking about my son. And he wasn't in the cafeteria. That's why all the commotion started in the cafeteria, because my son was supposed to be there at this time. And that's why it ended up in the library, because that's where they found him. That's where he was. And uh, yeah. that was the most definitely a hate crime. I mean, uh, you can call it what you want to call it. I mean... I mean, it, it just took me over. I mean, I couldn't believe that they let this happen, and we kept telling them. We kept telling them. Our children was telling us that these kids was doing this to them. And we even went as far to the school board, the principal, the dean, and they, you know what they told us? They told us to let our children go to school and grow up. Hmm. My son was dead three weeks after. Hmm. He was dead three weeks after they made that statement. That's why I was so angry. I mean, I was hurt and in regret. I mean, uh, I mean, that's why something needs to be done today, because enough is enough. I'm tired of watching our children die for no reason, all because they're misled and there's misunderstanding and sickness and hatred in this world today. We don't need to come together before we can make a change. You you think your son Isaiah and I don't know perhaps even your other children you think they were specifically hunted targeted during oh, they, the attack? Oh yeah, it was targeted because they're black. They targeted. Yeah, ain't no doubt about it. They, I mean, they was a they were children of color. I mean, you know, I'm not saying that you know, and a whole lot of people saying there's white kids died there too. But if you do your study. Those white children that died, they was down for these black children that went to this school. All of those children that died was was friends of these kids, of our children. So I'm most definitely positive that this was a hate crime. This, this crime was hit out of hatred, anxiety, jealousy, and sickness. And I'm telling you, it needs to stop. It needs to stop. All these other shootings, I mean, you know, it's almost the same thing. It's someone that's trying to make trying to make the next step to popularity. That's what it is. And this needs to stop. We need to start teaching these children that life is only for seasons. You understand what I'm saying? They're very short seasons. And... We're going to have to start making them understand that life is most definitely important. It's worth living. And until we can do that, we're going to keep on having these problems. While we were studying what happened uh, at Columbine, one of our listeners, when he heard the details about what happened with your son in the library and being literally dragged out from the table, where is that little nigger, as you said, and then shot point blank yeah, range, murdered. Got it. Uh, they yeah, said, he was murdered right there. They we said, had witnesses. Yeah, we had witnesses saying that. I mean, that's what happened. I hate to keep cutting you off, but it bothers mm -hmm. me when mm -hmm. they start talking like when you start saying how it happened. But I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to go and see it. I mean, it, it it tears me up, but it was wrong. It was wrong the way my son left this earth. It was wrong, and I'm gonna say it was wrong. I'm gonna say it was wrong forever. Until I stopped breathing, I'm going to say it was wrong, because it was wrong. That's why it hurts me so bad to hear about these other shootings that's going on. There's no reason for someone to shoot up a theater. There's no reason for someone to shoot up a, a, a grocery store. There's no reason for someone to shoot up a concert. There, I mean, it's just no reason for the schools, the, the kids scared to go to school because they are don't feel like they're being safe. So, you know, we need to make a change. That's what I'm saying. We need to come together as one unit. And I believe it could happen. If we stop thinking about who got this and who have that and my my race is this and my race is that, 
I'm superior and all that. We, until we stop all of this mess, then it's, this stuff is going to keep on going. I mean, look at this. Look at the, the rating of the White House. Now, come on. Mm. That's sacred. That's a, that's a crown jewel of the United States have been since the beginning. Look how they insulted that. And, and that was most definitely racial. We all know it. The good boys, you know, the Klan and all of them had something to do with it. And so, come on. Until we stop this type of hatred, I mean, this stuff is going to keep on growing. It's going to, it's going, I mean, you know, it, it was a curve on it, but now it's a manifested again. Until we come together as a whole, it's not going to work. It's impossible. And I believe this can happen. And that's why I started this uh, nonprofit organization, Let's Stump Out Hate, before it's too late, in the name of Isaiah Shows. Mm. That's, that's the name of the organization. Let's Stump Out Hate before it's too late, for sure. Do you? In the name of Isaiah Shows. Uh, do you think uh, what happened to Isaiah, do you think it would accurately be described as a lynching, Mr. Shows? <laughs> Nothing short of it. It just was. Uh, it all. It all served the same purpose. Mm-hmm. It all served the same purpose. They got done what they needed done, and my son was dead on the other end. So no matter how it happened, it was pretty much the same thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can call it. A whole lot of people would call it a massacre. A whole lot of people would call it a lynching. A whole lot of people would call it just downright. A disgrace, but no matter what you call it, my son is still dead, and he's no longer with us. So whatever you call it is all right with me, because all of it means the same. It's terrible. It's bad, and it's—I mean, you know—it put my family in in turmoil. Mm. And I mean, you know, we—I mean, everybody's saying it, it, you know, it'll get better. You know, it'll get a little better, but it, you'll never get over it. I think about it every single day. Matter of fact, I was thinking about it this morning. You know, how old my son would be, what he would be doing, what we would be doing if he was still living and if he was able to carry that charge. I mean, you know, I know he would have took it a whole lot farther than where I took it. So, you know, that's 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 one thing that's going to forever, you know, bother me. That's, that's, that's almost like kicking me every time. You know, every time I think about it, it's almost like, wake up, wake up, you know, but it's not a dream. Mm. It, it's real. My son was killed for no reason, all because of his color of his skin, and he was tired. So that's why Isaiah was killed. As you would say, Lynch, uh, whatever you want to call it. But he was murdered. He was taken for no reason. You mentioned how this event devastated your family. Obviously, you have other children. Isaiah wasn't your only child. Uh, what sort of impact did this have on your other children? A whole lot. They, I had to home. My, my children were scared to go outside due to the fact that we had been taunted before. Columbine, the school shooting. I mean, I, when this happened, I told the sheriff we had my garage door had been destroyed. You know, I had a, a, a double car garage door, and it had been destroyed. My van, they knocked all of the windows out of my van. They, knocked, they, they totally knocked every window out of my van. They toilet paper, my trees. When we got back home, it, all of this destruction, I reported it to the sheriff department. They made a report, and they got a record of it. Two months after this, my son was dead. And I told everyone that we had been reporting it, we were reporting it, and I kept the slips that they gave me. 
that, you know, how they, they reported that you did report it. And uh, they told the sheriff department told told the the reporters that we uh, were lying and we hadn't reported anything. Uh, they don't see no record of us reporting anything until I bought those statements out that they wrote that they supposed to have recorded. Now, if they didn't record them, then it was on them. But I had them. And it was proven that all of this was working in together. That's why these kids did what they did, because they knew wasn't nobody going to try to stop them. We tried to stop them. We tried to go to the school board. We went to the principal and the dean. They told us to let them grow up. Yeah, they let them. We, I mean, one would never, ever grow up again. And the other, my other three, they was, I mean, the other four, they totally confused. Just thank God they went to the next level. One of my sons that was involved in this uh, mess, he's a chief master sergeant in the Air Force. And my other daughter, she's a, a sales representative for airline. So they went on to do something great. And my youngest son is an engineer. So they went on to do, you know, do what they had to do due to the fact that we pushed that. We made sure that that happened, but... Everyone is not going to be that lucky or everyone is not going to be that focused after something so tragic, you know, happened. So uh, that's why I said that we all need to come together to help each other and one another. Just maybe this, just maybe all this madness will stop. Wow. That, one, I'm I'm so impressed with the job that you and, your lovely wife, uh, Vonda Scholes, did with your children, uh, Isaiah, all of your children, uh, in dealing with all of this. But I was staggered for a moment because we did our studies of Columbine and we studied these cowardly racist killers. And a part of what they were doing that led up to this massacre, uh, killing your child and 13 people in total, they were carrying out what they called missions and a part of what they were doing, they were attacking, yeah. vandalizing property, toilet papering property and things. So that really, that caught my attention. Like, wow, your property was toilet paper, and you said that they vandalized yeah. your garage and what have you? Oh, you heard about it in books. You heard about it on the news. You heard about it, how they was doing the properties out there. I was, was the first one. Wow. I was, was the first one. And, you know, out there in that community, where, you know, uh, you have to be qualified to stay there. Let's put it that way. And I felt like if I qualified to stay there, if my, if my money let me stay there, I, I could stay there. Well, I mean, we had a whole lot of neighbors and things that didn't agree with that. They didn't feel like we were supposed to be in that area. Because you're black? Yeah, exactly. Hmm. And, I mean, you know, there's, there's two so, total sides of this community. And I, I guess we was on the side that, you know, where we wasn't too much welcome. But, you know, on the other side, there were three or four black families stayed on the other side of this community. You know what I'm saying? But I guess, you know, we qualified to stay in the mix of the rest, you know, all these uh, aristocrats. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Because I had my own record label. I was what? in the music industry. Other than, I mean, that's a pretty big one with your property being destroyed, the garage and the toilet paper, but what sort of other things happened to let you know that you were not welcome, you and your family, because you all were black? I mean, I mean, how much can you, I mean, you know, throwing bricks through your window at before day in the morning, that won't, I mean, you know what I'm saying, that, that should give you a real sign. You might as well burn a cross in my yard. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, these things were reported and nothing was done about it because they saying we couldn't prove who did it. And we know who was doing it. They know who was doing it. They talking about that's these high school kids pranking. You gonna get you gonna let somebody die because of a prank? And I that's where I felt. That's why, you know, I was I was doing what I was doing because I was at my wits end because I that could have been detoured if not stopped, if they would have listened to what 
we had to say. But they told us to let our children grow up and go to school. Let them go to school and grow up. That's what they told us. And my son was dead three weeks after that statement was made. Wow. So that's why I speak like I do and I will forever will because I told him that I would never let his name go in vain. I would always be pushing forward to make sure this don't happen to no one else if I can stop it. Mm. It was uh, written in the Rocky Mountain News on April 25, 1999. That's five days from the massacre. Uh, Isaiah was killed because he was black. That Isaiah was killed because he was black haunts Michael Shoals. He moved his family to Denver 23 years ago to keep them from experiencing the same racism he experienced growing up in Texas. What sort of racism did you experience growing up in Texas, Mr. Shoals? Put it this, put it this way. I was uh, stuck in the generation. I was stuck in that part of the generation to where we was we was trying to make that change, you understand, that transition where, put it this way, I was one of the children that my mother, no matter how cold or how hot it was, that when she got with when uh, her and her four kids, that she had a uh, younger kid, but before they could get on the bus, she put her money in, and we had to go to the back door and get in the back of the bus. See, I was, in, I was living during that generation in Amarillo, Texas. That's what was going on there. So we was most definitely, uh, you know, we was, we never really got a chance to, to pull up. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Sir. I mean, that's the way it was in my hometown. So that's that's one reason I never ever wanted to raise my kids up there. Understood. Did you know uh, when we were reading about the Columbine situation, we found out there and you already told us there are not a whole lot of black people in Littleton, Colorado. Did you know that there were so few black people before you moved to that area? I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't really care. It wasn't none of my business. I moved there because I loved the way that the way they talked about the schools and you know, graduation rate and where kids go after you know, they leave there. That's what caught my attention, the technology that they had in the school, which was great. That's what caught my attention. And we had a we had a, a real good situation here, over there. You know what I'm saying? I thought we were getting ready to move into the next point of our lives, you know. Uh, that's what I was thinking. I was settling in. I called myself settling in, but we all see that we I was wrong. So after the massacre, you and you already detailed being so outspoken beforehand and talking about the abuse that you experienced and then the racism that your children experienced in school as well uh, and being so vocal afterwards and saying that this could have been prevented. Let's get all the details and the lawsuits and such that you filed. Uh, were you and your family, were you all targeted for your work to get all of these facts oh, revealed yeah. afterwards? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was the madman. I was I was scum of the earth running around there blaming these parents uh, for uh, what they kids doing. Uh, I was scum of the earth blaming the schools. And uh, these kids was, uh, they was misunderstood and, and all of this. And, but we were supposed to accept this. And my son is dead. You understand what I'm saying? And we told him that this stuff was going on. We told him that they was practicing. We told him that they was getting ready to start a massacre. It was supposed to happen. It was supposed to happen at the at the prom. That's when it was supposed to go on. Because my son was supposed to be at the prom. For, for some reason... The, the limo and everything, we had the limo rented. It was in front of the house and everything. And for some reason, he did not want to go. He did not want to go. And it didn't happen that night. It happened that following week. 
That's just when it happened. It happened the following week after the prom because it didn't. My son didn't show up at the prom. So I'm telling you the real thing. This is the truth. This is this is not what you done heard or read in the book. I'm telling you, I was there the day that my son was killed. The police was walking around there like it was nothing going on in that school. I'm hearing these kids screaming and guns going off, and, and they were shooting upstairs and downstairs. And, I mean, it, it got so it got so far to me. I mean, I I charged the, uh, the sheriff, and they was, he was just standing there looking. I charged him and, 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 took, and tried to, I mean, I had my hand on his gun, and I'm glad my wife screamed. Because if she wouldn't have screamed, I probably would have been one of the fatalities because I would have went up there in that school. Where they wouldn't go, I would have went. Mm. See, because that's, that's really bad. I mean, you know, and that's what made me think they knew more than what they were let on because of how they was letting this go on in that school. And they know these kids was in there. Uh, they, they couldn't defend themselves. And, you know, and they, they was walking around the school like there wasn't anything going on. Instead of charging, instead of going in there, doing what they needed to do. I mean, I could understand you, you know, you have to stand back and, and, and you know, get, make your plan, get your plans right. But it shouldn't take you that long and your people are dying. You understand? We had people dying in that school, getting shot up, jumping out a window, and y'all, I mean, there was no urgency. None. And the kids that escaped, they escaped their own. They escaped on their own. So, I mean, you know, I'm just talking. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, I hate to just. On and on and on and on, but, you know, it, it just bothers me when I start talking about this. I mean, because something needs to be done about this. I mean, uh, let's just go on and say what's real. You understand? It's not what we feel today. It's real that hatred and, I mean, all of this stuff is still going on. Racism, I mean, it's not change faces, but it's still going on. I mean, it's just as strong as it was back then. I mean, I, I really hate to say it, but they still trying to put them shackles and chains on us. They're just invisible. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they, they first they try to dehumanize us, and then they try to separate us, and then they try to break us down. That's the whole trickery of racism. And that's what they was doing at that school. Mm-hmm. And we knew it. Telling them that it was going on. See. Wow. Go ahead, Mr. Scholes. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's the determination of of this hatred is, I mean, it's, it's, it's festering up in the, in, in the world today. I mean, it's not only here now, it's, it's all over, you know, it's all over the world. Look at all these wars that's going on now. I mean, it, I mean, how could our children learn to be peaceful and they got and they got wars going on and people uh, attacking the White House? I mean, I mean, how could we, you know, how could we be models, you know, uh, for these children? And this kind of stuff is going on. The adults, the the patriots and the matriarchs of this country doing something like that. Do you understand what I'm saying? We're going to have to come together. I mean, I know I keep saying it, but that's what's going to have to happen. We're going to have to come together and change some of this madness. Mm. If we don't come together as a unit and create another village, uh, two villages or whatever, it'll never stop. Mm. It'll never stop. Michael we're gonna have to realize we're gonna have to realize that we're brothers and sisters in humanity, and until we figure that out, this is gonna keep happening. It shouldn't be no white, black, yellow, orange, or whatever. It shouldn't be any of that. We all human. 
We are brothers and sisters. We are members of the same race, the human race. And everybody should remember that. First, because if you cut, if I'm white, I mean, if I'm black and he white, if I get cut and need his blood, don't you know he, he might be a match for me? Or vice versa, I might be a match for him. That's because we all human. We all share humanity. That's what makes us brothers and sisters on this earth until we realize that nothing is going to change. Mr. Scholes, when we were studying the Columbine situation, we were stuck with struck by the destruction of evidence around this case to kind of prevent people from learning all the details about why all of this happened and oh wow it looks like this could have probably been prevented the basement tapes are a key part of that the video footage of these cowardly racist killers being in the basement or in various locations and talking about Uh, the planning did you get to see the basement tape sir oh yes i did wow i I got it. I got it all documented. What it is is, it was. They knew. They had to know that this was going on. I mean, they had to know. I'm, I'm talking about these parents now. See, when I back then, when I said these parents should be responsible mm-hmm. for what they children did, they told me I was crazy and ignorant and just mad and hateful. Yes, I sir. shouldn't be blaming the parents. They told me this. And I told them that any time a child tells you you can't go in his room and you know he got an arsenal in there, call the police. Call the authorities. You could have stopped it. You don't go buy them a car if they started jumping on you and, 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 and telling you what you're going to do. You're going to go buy him a car and tell him, you know, you're going to get many more presents if you start acting better. See, that's the kind of situation they had going on in that school. See, they didn't, they didn't know anything about discipline because that's how it escaped. That's how things got by the authorities. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm saying now is that's what we need to do. That's what we need to do is come together and realize that hatred, anti-Semitism, I mean, anti-Semitism, all of that is, is still going on. I mean, people of color is still being distracted. It's still been put down. I mean, it's still been misplaced. And it's all because of the color of their skin. I mean, I, I never wanted to be in that porter as saying that that was what was going on because I hate crutches. And that's what everybody say when you go talk about white and black and, and, and races. They say it's a crutch. No, it's not a crutch. That's reality. That's going on today. And it's been proven to us by others. All you have to do is start speaking out what the truth is, and you'll find out that they'll start coming out. They start coming out from under the covers, the rocks, and out from the bu- out the bushes. They're there. Start speaking out, and you'll find them. They'll find you, because we done, we was experiencing it. That's why I know where these people is today that have lost children and, and relatives in these mass shootings. I know where they are because I've been there. Mm. Did you think the uh, basement tapes, did you think they should have been publicized or did you agree with the thought that we don't want to promote this sort of behavior so let's keep it sealed? I, I'm, I'm always, I always have said everything should have been transparent. Everything should have been shown. I mean, anytime you got the power to have judges Supreme judges to tell you to destroy all the evidence in the timeline because of destruction. Well, what else can you what else can you do? 
Now we got the judges saying destroy this 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 pot, this stuff. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And that's why we're talking about conspiracy. See. Since we're talking about the tape. Not only the tape should have been shown, the timeline and all the evidence shouldn't have been destroyed. Why it was destroyed, we can it'll never, it'll, we'll never know. But it was destroyed, and that made that made nation news. Hmm. There was definitely no transparency in Columbine, in no aspect of any of this. Um, in fact, the depositions. There will be another one. Uh, we have it on our calendar for 2027. When those depositions become public so we can see what questions you all were able to ask uh, the killer's parents, uh, the Harris's and Klebold's respectively, uh, in your deposition from way back when, that'll be public information. Uh, and even that, there was so much brawling and court battles, as Mr. Scholes was telling us about, to get that information destroyed, and thankfully it was not. But they did make us wait all these years to access this information. Uh, what was your impression when you were able to sit down to question these white killers' parents? How did they respond to the questions in the deposition? They did not. They refused to meet with us. They refused to meet with us uh, because we had said so many times that they should have went to the, the authorities. I mean, they were responsible. I don't care how you look at it. I mean, you're responsible for what your children do. And if they would have did back then what they're doing now, making these parents, making these parents pay for those, what their children was doing, that a whole lot of this was stopped also. So now they're doing what they should have did back then. It wouldn't have been the school shooting that had came up. You understand what I'm saying? These parents would have been more tentative of their children. Wow. I I said that we gave Mr. Scholes a little time to make sure he was comfortable before he could speak with us. And I told you all then, I said, hey, now they have prosecuted the uh, white child in Georgia, Colt Gray, 14, he killed four people at a Georgia high school just a few weeks ago. They also prosecuted his father, Colin Gray, for negligence. And we talked about the Crumbly case from before. His parents, they have also been criminally charged. I said, if Columbine were to happen now, 2024, I think those parents would have been charged. Uh, what, what do you think, Mr. Scholes? I ain't no doubt about it. It would have happened. I mean, they, they realized that they, something should have been done back then. But they, the power of that community, I'm letting you know that there was a lot of power in that community. There was judges, there was lawyers, there was senators. I mean, we had, all, we had people standing in that community where we were staying. There was a uh, director of the FBI. All of these people were standing in that same community we were staying in. And that's what happened. These, when these children, these were children of these aristocrats, and they protected them to the highest. They went all the way up to the Supreme Court to protect them of Colorado. So believe me, there's nothing we could do. There was too much power. All we could do is let everybody know that it was wrong and, let it, and, and, and try to put a face on this hate. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. Try to try to make sure that people realize that what really killed these children is the hatred and anxiety and the sickness that they just taught. You know, you don't be born with that type of hate. You are taught that type of hate. You're taught racism. You're taught these things. You're not born with this. And I mean, that's what I mean when I say we're going to have to come together and make these changes together. Because as long as these people out there plant these deadly seeds, they're going to keep growing. Attacking the White House, that was nothing but a deadly seed. And what you think of the children that seen this? Mm -hmm. That all the 
grandmothers and grandfathers, uncles, sisters, and brothers uh, attacking the supposed to be sacred. The, that's a monument of the United States, the White House. That's untouchable, supposed to be. But they made all of they broke the rules of all of that. All of these, all of these uh, white supremacists and the good boys and all of these things. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, they, they just made it made it free for all. Now, how do you think the other countries looked at us when that happened? How do you think they looked at us? The same way and many they, they showed they showed racism all the way through it. They showed that, I mean, there was nothing but racism. They sitting on top of the desk, uh, uh, you know, talking about the Klan. You understand what I'm saying? Now, I mean, what does this have to do? I mean, why would you raid the White House? Why would you do something like that? But to teach, anxi- to teach hate and anxiety, that's, all, that's the only thing that they got out of this. I didn't mean to interrupt you when when you asked about how the people around the world view the events from January 6th. I said, wow, they might have similar thoughts to the way that they look at the school shootings, because that's such a such an exclusively U.S. phenomenon. They don't do that all the time. No. See, go shoot up the schools all over. That is just us in this part of the world so they might have been thinking like wow there they go again those rowdy white people really uh huh there you go they then, they every time you can tell when things is getting good i mean things will start looking decent and they started all over again they 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 try to knock you back down they knock you off your horse they you're making it you're doing too good you you're making it too much you, I mean, we all know that that's what's happening. They, you're taking our, you're taking our position. You're taking the positions belong to us. Now we're talking about us. We're talking about ethnic groups. Now you understand what I'm saying? That's where all this hatred come from. One man trying to get more than the other. One man trying to take what belong to the other. You understand what I'm saying? Until we stop all this madness, it's gonna keep happening. Maybe it's gonna be throughout the world, the ending of the world. Maybe. We don't know this. But the point is, if we don't come together now, today, as of right now, this is going to get worse. And it is, absolutely. I just wanted to be make sure I heard correctly. Were you ever able to ask, uh, you or your legal representatives, ever able to ask any questions of the Harrises and Klebos? Uh, not at all. Wow. Wow. Not at all. Not at all. We even we even tried to set meetings up with them. I mean because uh, I wanted to know how you let your child uh build an arsenal and you not report it. If you scared to do I mean I'd take care of it myself, but you know, some parents just don't have it. They should have went to the authority and let them do it. I imagine that all of this we never would have been here today if they would have did something about their children. Mm. Excellent point. And I, you totally reminded me, Mr. Scholes, I forgot you talked about all of the help that powerful white people who were there to protect and cover all of this up. And you just couldn't overcome all the powerful allies. I forgot there was a white FBI director who lived there. His children yeah, son, went to his Columbine. Son <laughs> his son was one of the leaders of that group. That's how they got. That's, I mean, I really believe that that's how they got out of it. That's how. That's how they. Everything was tore up and this was messed up. They had the. They had that investigation so messed up it was pathetic. That's because the director son was involved in it. Hmm. You think he was involved he never, in the attack? had that post he never should have been posted once he found out his son was involved he never should have had that post wow you think the director's son was involved in the attack in some way do i think i know all of them was that whole trench they they call them the trench coat mafia mm-hmm. 
that whole they all of them had something to do with that shooting. All of that that whole group of children had something to do with it. Like they said, the the man that never came to that school, they lied because I seen them coming in and out of that school every other day when I picked up my children. Mark Manning was in that in and out of that school many a time. And he was one of the uh, conspirators. One of the main major conspirators of this shooting. Mark, what's his name again? Mark? Mark Mangus. Mangus, thank you. Mangus. Mangus. Wow, that I totally, I rem- and I said the same thing that you did, Mr. Scholes, when I found out, like, oh, Agent Fusile, his children go to this school. Oh, you should have recused yourself from the investigation. Like, that's a conflict of interest. Get somebody else in so we can, you know, invest transparency. That way we have... But he had to destroy everything before he stepped down. He had to make sure things was going in the direction away from his son and all of their friends before he stepped before he stepped out of it. Why do you think it got so messed up? Ain't no way that investigation should have been that messed up. No way at all. Mm. It's, that should have been a special task force that went in there after they found out it was racism. Wow. And found out that... Uh, the the authorities uh, children was in in the school with the you know had something to do with this group of children. Hmm, that is see that's why I wanted to talk to Mr. Scholes to see if we could get more information. Did anyone approach you? It's been twenty five years now. So has anyone approached you to come and and do a book to publish all this or a uh, documentary? Uh, I was going to do one. I was going to start one, but I couldn't find myself to do it because it hurt so it hurt so much, you know what I'm saying? Mm. It hurt so bad, you know. Uh, one day I might, but, you know, it, it's, it's just, you know, I was writing the book, but I finished with my book, but it wasn't about the Columbine, you know, massacre. Mm. But one day I just might, you know, I'm gonna, it's going the name of it is going to be Let the Truth Be Told. I hope you can. I, I, oh, I'm sorry. I said that's going to be the name of the book. That I mean, it's going to be written if I, if God uh, bless me with the breath in my body, it's going to be finished before I leave from here. Let the truth be told. I hope you. I'm gonna pray on that one myself. I hope you get the will and the energy to get it done. You got a reader right here, Mr. Scholes. I'm, I'm sure some of our listeners would love to read it. Uh, as well, uh, do people do they call and approach you to come? Because there's so many documentaries on Columbine. Do they come and ask you to to share well, your uh, thoughts? They, it was uh, I've had many, many, but I just don't. I just can't find talking to a whole lot of people. I mean, you're one of the you're one of the ones I just really felt like talking to. I mean, for some reason, somehow, or some. I mean, you know, for I mean, you know, I've been asked uh, NBC, I've been CBS, I, you know, I. I mean, all of them, I mean, but I don't really find the need to speak anymore. It's not doing any good. Until uh, until I start doing good, that's that's when I really want to start speaking. And to a small audience like yourself, uh, not in a major capacity, well, see, I feel needed to do this because that's how we need to start small and let it grow and, and, and fester into something huge. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. These are the small genius that I like speaking at, or uh, speaking to, to you know, to let them know what we need, what need to be done. Mm. We appreciate you <laughs> talking to us. It is just being able to learn a little bit more. Did were you able or even interested in reading uh, Sue Klebold's book? She's the mother of Dylan Klebold, one of the white killers. Did you even have an interest to read her book? No, it didn't even didn't bother at all. I really, really didn't know she had wrote one, but if it did, I wouldn't. I mean, I wouldn't wouldn't have had no interest in reading it. Not not vindictive or anything, but I just would have. I mean, I just wouldn't 
feel right reading something like that and knowing that they could have stopped my son from being murdered. See, so, I mean, I, I, I can't get into that. Would it so many people they promote this theory that Columbine and many of these other school shootings they are the result of depression and mental health? Uh, do you think with Columbine specifically that this was the result of these two white boys being depressed and having mental health issues? No, these two white boys was white. These two white boys are joined. The nation. These two white boys was racist. These two white boys was the ones who helped spread the swap stickers all over the school. These white boys were throwing the children of color in the trash can, locking them in the lockers. That, that's not sickness. That madness is taught. You understand what I'm saying? Sickness is mental when somebody is, is born with the capacity not to think of rational, but that was they were thinking very rational. Uh, all that practicing out there in the woods, shooting and, and, and getting ready for this. So, no, that's not sickness. My thoughts exactly, uh, Mr. Scholes. Um, just so we can understand, you're in Tennessee now. Why exactly did you choose to leave Colorado? Uh, we couldn't live there. I mean, what it is is we was having a house, another house built prior to when we was getting ready to move. Hmm. And our new house that we was having built, we was, uh, you know, they had to start putting the windows and they put the bricks, you know, the stone we had chose to put on the outside or whatever. Mm -hmm. And one day we went in to check everything out and they had swat stickers what? and skulls and bones wrote all over our walls, all over the floors, all, all in the, you know, the sections where the kitchen and bathrooms and the stairs, they, the, they vandalized the whole house. Right then is when I knew I needed to move my family. Dang. Right then is when I, need, I knew I needed to move. Because if they do that to a house that haven't been built yet, could you imagine what they're going to do with it when it gets done? And maybe even the people that stay in it. They see You see they cut short. They don't mind doing what they need to do. They proved it when they killed my son. Wow. This happened after the massacre at Columbine? Yeah, this happened after the massacre. This was a brand new house we was having built. Jeez. And they just they vandalized the inside of it. That's how I ended up buying that house in Houston. That's when we moved to Houston. Mm. <laughs> wow. Uh <laughs> That even now for sure, uh, just this year in Colorado, they established the Black Coloradan Racial Equity Commission signed into law this year. They are tasked with investigating the impact and history of racism in the state of Colorado. Has anyone in relation to this commission, the, Col the Black Coloradan Racial Equity Commission, has anyone with the commission contacted you, Mr. Scholes? Not yet. Not yet. But I would love to be, I would love, I'm interested. I'm going to check it out. Because I really believe that, you know, I mean, that's, that's, that's a step toward, you know, correcting this thing. That's a good step. Because believe it or not, Colorado have a whole lot of this, this uh, white collar racism. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, you don't have to be blue collar, you know, or running up and down the streets, uh, you know, rallying. And, I mean, you know, they, you know, these these are white collar races. You understand what I'm saying? What? So you can, never know who they are. Can you give us some details, Mr. Scholes? What do you mean, white collar racists in Colorado? What do you mean specifically? I mean, you know, uh, white collar means that they're they're not 
they run they run the organization. They're in the offices. They own these banks. They own these these uh, clubs. They own you know they they own a lot of things. You understand what I'm saying? Got it. But that still don't mean they're not part of this organization. I I care not to speak of it too much, but you know what I'm talking about. This racism. This Aryan nation. Got it. Got it. The more pa- what you were telling us before, the more powerful aristocrats yeah, in the area. Who- there you go. I, yes, sir. There you go. Yes, sir. I, I didn't want to, you know, like I said, I didn't want to taint my, the whole conversation. So I had to let lead into that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, did you, uh, when I was calling you in advance to see if we could speak with you and you said the, the shooting that happened last year, uh, at the, the covenant school in Tennessee, that that shooting really impacted you. Now this is another white oh, shooter. Yeah. That was too close to home. You know, that was, that was really close to home. You know, it's, even though it was a white situation, it was still now, see, this is what I'm talking about. Sickness. See, that right there, now that's mental ill, Ill that's, that's mental illness. You understand what I'm saying? That's mental illness, which she never should have been able to get that gun. You understand what I'm saying? That's mental illness. But our situation, that wasn't mental illness. It might have been mental illness, but it was taught. That could have been, you know, that could have been stopped. But this young lady that did this stuff in the covenant that here in Nashville, well, see, she was sick. I mean, that don't give it an excuse because she never should have been able to get that weapon. Those parents still should be responsible because that's their child. I'm going to know what my child is doing for always until they move out of my house, and then I'm going to know what they're doing after. So as should be a parent's duty to know what their child is doing or knowing they, what's bothering them. Absolutely. I checked the Tennessee Star, one of the local newspapers, and they, in the spirit of transparency, they published the journal of the shooter in Tennessee who was killed in the attack I went through the journal just to see because some people had theorized that this white killer was inspired by the Columbine killers because they had on similar attire they were dressed like the killers in Columbine so they said I think there's some influence here I started going through that journal this sentence is on page 39 if you get the PDF it's available online page 39 this sentence this is for the shooting that happened last year so 24 years after all this happened in Colorado this is on page 39 PDF of the journal Nashville shooter wrote I want my massacre to end in a way that Eric and Dylan would be proud of this is written oh. shortly before the massacre did you know they were mentioned by name explicitly in the journal of the nashville killer oh my god no i didn't i i'm, I'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to look that up i'm gonna have to read that why would they do something like that my goodness i mean don't they know that that's bringing these children that's what's making these children do this they they making them look like heroes. I mean, they making them look like they martyrs or whatever. They need that's what that's one thing they need to do. They need to start teaching instead of preaching. You understand what I'm saying? They need to start teaching instead of preaching. But I mean, it's easy to, to speak out and 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 talk about things. But why do you have to speak out and talk about this? If you start looking at the back end of it, if you start teaching, maybe you won't have to preach as much. You understand what I'm saying? So we're going to have to start teaching from the beginning, start teaching our children. 
our young children that life is valuable and you have to start living it day by day like it's a, you know, you're going to have to live your life like it's going to be your last day. That's why you got to do what you can today and not wait on tomorrow. You see what I'm saying? You always try to do today instead of putting it off until tomorrow. Excellent. I'll tell all of my children. You said you tell all of your children that? Yes, all of them, and those that's not my children. I mean, I, I, I speak to a lot of children a lot because, I mean, you know, I feel as though if I talk to them, then that's, if I could stop one child from causing destruction and put him in the right path or the right direction, then I feel like my job has been done. I'm going to always try to take these children and put them in the right direction. That's the whole purpose of my organization. Mm. Let's stomp out hate before it's too late. For Isaiah Shoals, uh, founder, father, Mr. Michael Shoals. I have to say, I mean, he said repeatedly, you know, they talked about me like I was a crazy person in the press for pursuing these lawsuits and saying that these parents should have been prosecuted. I mean, Mr. Shoals does not sound like some bitter old person at all. <laughs> he is really patient, calm, says I try to be give out helpful advice to other people, even if they're not my children, super concerned about his own children who are doing well. I mean... Wow. Did you did you know, Mr. Scholes, 25 years ago that it, what we heard in Nashville, that these two white killers, they are going to inspire generations of school shooters for decades to come? Did, did any of you all have any idea that that was what was going to happen? No, I didn't. I mean, I, I thought, you know, like I say, I was hoping for change. That's all we can do is hope for change. But it never came. Matter of fact, change it did change it for the worse. It, it didn't get any better. It was changed for the worse. So that's where I feel about it. Man, worse. That's man. I've heard that from other people that it's gotten worse uh, since yes. the time of Columbine. It's just gotten worse. Um, it's got worse. I know. We spoke with Dr. Angeline Spalding Flowers last year. She's a black female and she studies school shootings. She wrote a whole book uh, that deals with the different school shootings. Columbine is included. One of the main points that she makes in that book, she and her co-author, who are both black, by the way, is that these school shootings, they are almost always white. The shooters, Columbine, Tennessee, Sandy Hook, Parkland, white. And she says the fact that we do not call attention to the fact that these shootings are white people, that this is white people that are doing this, and we need to study why that is. She said the fact that we don't do this and the fact that we keep looking for lame excuses like depression and mental health and bullying that do not get to the crux of why white people keep doing this, that is a major part of why we have not made more progress in stopping this problem. What do you think about that theory? Uh, that theory is, is, I mean, I can't really he or ha on that. Uh, and I want y'all to know up front, I'm real. I'm not a, I'm not a, a very educated person and don't try to be. That's why I talk in plain language so you can understand what I'm saying, where I'm coming, where I'm coming from. So, you know, uh, I'm not going to get up into the, the word factors. I mean, I want everybody to understand me. I mean, I want the man sitting on the bar stool on five points and the man sitting up in the White House behind the desk. I want everybody to understand me. Because I don't I don't talk to the I don't talk to the homeless when they're sleeping up under the bridge and in the alleyways and I don't sit in front of the president. So I done been everywhere. 
Well said. That's right. You did. You got to talk to President Clinton when he was actually in the White House. Isn't that true? Yep. And Bush, George Bush, too. Wow. <laughs> well, uh, man, I think I was able to get through all of the questions that we had. Um, wow. It's been spectacular. I feel like I, I learned so much information uh, in all of this. Uh, I want to make sure I add, I also thought the Klebolds and Harrises should have been prosecuted way back all that time ago. I think they would have been prosecuted now if this event happened, and I think they should have been prosecuted prosecuted way back in 99. Tell you what, I would have made a change if they would have been. You think so? I know so. You know so. I know that would have, have been a pinnacle. That have, I've have talked to them parents that they they better start watching your kids. Mm. Yes, I think it would have. It would have stopped it. it. I mean, if it not stopped it, it would have detoured it. It would have. It would have put a put a break on it. Mm. Did you see the sheriff down in uh, Volusia County in Florida? He said, "I'm tired of this," and he said, "I'm gonna start giving the perp walk." They have an 11 year old. He got caught in advance. He was making threats that he was going to shoot up the school, and they caught him. He had a big weapon stash and all the rest of it. But they did the perp walk. They're charging him as a felony, uh, as an adult felony. But they did the perp walk, put his picture up, and the parents, he said, this is what's going to happen. I'm done playing around with all this. You're going to do exactly what you just said. You're going to be responsible for your child. Uh, And some of the people were happy about this. Some of them were not. But you think this we might actually get some progress on this if we start prosecuting these parents and taking these yes. parents to task? Yes, I know it was, it's gonna make, it'll make a difference. That's what I, I've been saying it for 25 years. I've been saying it for 25 years. When I was saying it, they were talking about me. Now they just decided to do what I asked them to do 25 years ago. Could you imagine the lives that would have been saved if they mm. did that? Mm-hmm children's lives that would have been saved. Mm. Yeah. If the parents would have did, if they would have prosecuted those parents, showing them that they ain't going to have it. And they knowing them kids built that arsenal. How in the world are you going to not call the police and you knowing what they're getting ready to do? You're inviting them to kill people. Call it aiding and abetting in some circles, uh, with uh, <laughs> thus criminal charges, which should have happened in Columbine. Uh, we did have one one person dialed in with a question, really quick, uh, fellow Texan uh, Lauren. Did you have a question for Mr. Michael Shoals, father of Isaiah Shoals? Yes, sir. Um, hello, Mr. Shoals. I'm really appreciative that you were able to join us on the broadcast. Um, I was wondering, did you talk to Isaiah about racism, what it is and how it works? Yes, he most definitely, he was very aware of it. That's why, that's why he ended up probably uh, like he did, uh, because he had blinders on when it came to racism. Most of his friends was white. You know, they football, you know, they play football together. And uh, most of them were white because there was a, you know, the population was white. And I told him, I explained that to him, that you're going to be, you know, you're going to be there. Uh, I explained to him that you was going to be there. Yeah, you're going to be there uh, with these kids. And uh, you need to understand that everybody don't like us. You understand? You ain't going to be able to get along with everybody at that school. I said, so you need to be watchful. And he did pretty good himself until these children start running around his school offending his brother and sister. He threw his, they threw his brother in the trash can, which my son, uh, I'm talking about the chief master sergeant right now, and my daughter, they closed her up in the locker. I'm talking about, my, you know, the one 
that was in the school in that Columbine High School with them. And my son confronted the the leader of that group and told him he he just can't have that happening to his sister and brother. And of course, it started a big confusion. I think it was all started over a little girl in in, uh, in the first place. I, I I'm gonna be honest with you. I think that's what it was all about, the beginning of it, and then that's what made them start getting outrageous with all the other children, you know, due to the fact that he was, they was getting along with, you know, they was kind of having words with my son. And the whole thing just worked, just worked into, it manifested into this big, to this big confusion. So, yes, he understood. Yes, he understood that racism existed. But it, he had blinds on. He didn't, it didn't matter to him. It only mattered when they started, you know, messing with his family. Okay. Um, do, or do you think that white people collectively are dangerous? Uh, I can't really say all... I mean, you know, we can look at both sides of that. I mean, I, and I, that that coin there, I hate flipping it because I can flip it on one side more than the other, uh, one on more than the other on the other side. So I, you know, I can't really judge that, but I know it's more. They're they're they have more the more capacity of being evil and carrying that torch due to the fact of their ancestry. So that's the only way I can put that as the way that they were taught, you know, to be that. So that's that's the only way I can put that. I mean, because, you know, uh, the ones that I done met, I done, I done met some good ones, and, and believe me, I done met some that I wouldn't care to see again. I mean, I don't actually met people that I despise like that. And when I despise a person like that, white or black, I'm not going to be in your face. And I taught my son that. So he he understood it. I mean, I'm, I, re, I feel good about that. I know for sure that he did everything he could to save somebody around him. I mean, I, I know he did. So I mean I'm I'm you know that he was a protector that's why he ended up dead I think he, I mean he 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 challenged this this leader of this group and see they were supposed to have got him at prom that's what we found out but by him just for some reason he didn't want to go he just up and said I don't want to go to the prom and we had to limo and everything in front of the house and he just said right then I don't want to go and uh. And it happened a week. It just happened shortly after. Matter of fact, it happened in the same week of the prom after the prom. So, I mean, he understood um, it. I mean, I I, 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 I really hate to, to really put it that way, but I mean, I always thought that if anybody got away, it would be him because of he of his understanding of, you know, him knowing that that could have happened. And I'm almost positive that the reason he didn't get away, he stayed there with the rest of those kids. I'm, I, I, know that for, I know that for sure because my son was fat. You understand what I'm saying? And he knew for sure that when he heard them guns and things going off, he knew. That what was going on, and I, I really believe that he could have got away if he really wanted to. I mean, I mean, I'm not saying it that way, but I really believe that if he wasn't obligated, he could have got away. If he was by himself, I believe he would ran for it. That's the kind of kid he was. He was very protective. Very protective. Yeah, so uh, that's all I can really say about that. Okay, I just have one more question. 
Um, okay. Do you think it's logical for non-white people to be afraid of white people? Uh, yes. Now, I have to say yes, because white majority of white people feel still feel like they, you know, feel like they the the top, you know, feel like they should be over, you know, more. I don't know. We just say that master of the situation. You understand what I'm saying? You're supposed to be beneath me. I mean, you know, no matter how low I am and how no matter how how you are. You still beneath me because you black. You see what I'm saying? So that's probably where that, that came. From. Uh, you know that they, they're gonna always. You can be a. Uh, you can be like yourself. You could be a millionaire, and you can find one of them white folks, one of them white people up there on. Uh, you say in Houston, you can find or one of them white people right off the of Sixth Street up there, and uh. And 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 they're 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 beneath they'll they'll say you beneath them no matter what. You understand what I'm saying? When you could buy them, but you're still beneath them. And by you not being beneath them, that's what make them angry. That's what that's why they can't stand to see you have more than what they got. You understand? So that's where a whole lot of these things come from. You see now, I mean, when you put it the way you asked, sir, I really appreciate you taking the time to answer my question. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you for asking them. Much obliged, uh, Lauren. Uh, before we let you go, Mr. Scholes, you talked about. Uh, your son Isaiah and him being such a protector and in the library specifically where so many were slaughtered. Um, Kyle Velasquez, unless I'm mistaken, was also in the library at Columbine. He's one of the 13 who was, who was killed. I don't know if he was friends or if he was close with your son Isaiah, but do you think Kyle Velasquez, do you think he is a non-white person, person of color, Kyle Velasquez? Yes. He, he's a, he's a, he's a Chicano kid and, I mean, he. I mean, he was. Uh, you know, Kyle was kind of a uh, slow and a slow. You know, he was. I mean, he wasn't there all up there, but you know, he was still a bright kid. You understand? He didn't deserve to get what he got. You understand? And he he was a kid of color. I mean, he was one of those that. I mean, he had blinders on himself. You know what I mean? He was a good friend of my daughter. You know, they was in the same grade. You know, so, uh, and my daughter is one of those type children that, you know, she was uh, like the, the one that's going to side with the underdog, if I want to put it that way. Uh, she was going to, you know, she would make friends with those that nine times out of ten wouldn't have a friend. And uh, that's the way my daughter was. Wow. She was popular on that. Great parenting, great daughter, great parenting. Yeah. Um, that she I think tried that her best. she tried her best. You said, sir. We tried our best. Oh we, yeah. We we God fearing. I mean, we God is all through our house. We try to make sure we do the right thing. We we pray about things. We we talk about. We discuss our matter. We discuss matters that you know that goes on in the house. We, I mean, if there was. Uh, a problem we most definitely would try to solve it among the family because that's where it starts with the family. You understand? You can't start it nowhere but with the family. I mean, until you get your family straight, you shouldn't be saying nothing to anyone. That's why I know these parents could have did something about these kids buying these guns. Absolutely. One parent bought the gun for the kid. Now, what other reason would you buy this kid this gun and a lesson you won't know he was going to harm somebody? You gave him the okay to harm someone when you bought him the gun. You told him it was okay to go kill somebody. 
pipe bombs too <laughs> had that in the yeah. police report that they knew about that before columbine they knew, they knew about the whole they knew about the whole thing they was they even taped it they showed they were telling them that it was going to happen the students was telling them it was going to happen the only ones that was that really took effect that day you could tell the ones that knew because they didn't even come to school attendance was very low that day Attendance was very low because the kids knew what was going to happen. Those that knew, those that didn't come to school, all of them knew. Hmm. All they had to do was find that, look, check the attendance, and they had to go find out who knew about it and who didn't. See, all this information was destroyed. Uh, hid, I should say. They tried to destroy it. That's why 2027, we are going to get those depositions to see what answers they got from the parents. Uh, but I just I think that's so important because in a school, as you already told us, in a school and town, Littleton, Colorado, Columbine, that doesn't have very many non-white students or people, they go to the library and then two of the people that get killed in the library are non-white. That stands out to me. Mm -hmm. I said that immediately, like, wow, that sounds like he might have went there or they went there deliberately. We are looking for it's not even that many non-white people in the school. And we find some in the library. We make sure we get both of them like that. No, 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 they were going to the library because they, they found out that's where my son was. They, they found out that's where he was. That's why they worked their way up. That's why the killings was going through the school. Because they had to get to my son. That's who they came in the school looking for. That little nigga, they walked in the school. When they walked in there setting those bombs down and shooting up the, the library, I mean uh, the, the cafeteria, my son was supposed to be there eating. Mm. That was his school, I mean that was his lunch break. But see, he wasn't in the cafeteria. He took his lunch and went to the library to help another, help one of his friends with an essay. And see, that's why he was in the library instead of the cafeteria. They probably would have got him in the cafeteria if he would have been there. That's how he ended up getting killed in the library. Wow. And you think they came to the library specifically looking for Isaiah? Oh, no, they, they, they most, there go that little nigga. Mm. And what, do, what is that saying? There go that little nigga under the deck. Now, we have witnesses. That's what was said. There go that little nigga up under the deck. And that's why he was killed, right there. Hate crime. Uh, heard it directly from Mr. Show. Said the same thing now that he said 25 years ago. Hate crime and the killing of his son. Wow. It has been... Uh, just wow i mean i wish it was different circumstances but we are super grateful uh for you taking a little bit of time to speak with us we are going to pray and hope that you are able to gather yourself and get let the truth be told written uh, you have an audience we would be first in line to read it sir if you go on a book tour we are going to be front low front row uh eager every word will be right there uh but Please, if you well, can get I am, it. I am, uh, I am presently writing it. I mean, I am presently working on it. That was that's going to be my next book that I finish. We are waiting to read it, sir. Let the truth be told, uh, Mr. Michael Shoals, uh, father of Isaiah Shoals and founder. Let's stomp out hate before it's too late. In the name of Isaiah Shoals, uh, thank you so much. Just can't say it enough for sharing a bit of your time and energy. Many of our listeners just wrote in. They wanted to uh, send their condolences to you and your family uh, and gratitude for sharing some of your time and insight with us uh, this Sunday evening, uh, beginning of autumn. Uh, keep up the outstanding work. I wish they had listened to you 25 years ago. I think maybe if they had prosecuted those parents, yeah, we might be in a totally different place Maybe that situation in Georgia 
doesn't even happen. And a lot of the other, and maybe you would have never had to go to Virginia Tech way back when. Yes, uh huh. All of this, all of this uh, manifested, all because they didn't want to uh, make those parents responsible. Mm. They didn't want to make those parents responsible. That's why it all happened. Michael Scholes joining us live from Tennessee, right down the road, literally from the Covenant School shooting that took place last year where they did. I'm going to read the sentence again because I was stunned when I saw it today. Last year, the white killer at the new Covenant School shooting wrote in their journal, I want my massacre to end in a way that Eric and Dylan would be proud of. That's that what happened. Tell me about it. Tell me about that it. Is sick. Oh my God, that's sickness. That's what happened. Go ahead, Mister. What Schultz. is this world coming to? My God, twenty-five years of twenty-five years of distillment, and she bringing it up, using it. My goodness, I tell you, that's crazy. She wasn't even born. Better, she wasn't she, even born, that's what I'm saying. Right. She had no idea what she was doing. See, that's going to show you that it's taught. These things are taught. That's why these parents should be more tentative of their children. Agreed. Uh Please enjoy the rest of your evening, Mr. Scholes, you, your wife, uh, Mrs. Vonda Scholes, uh, and the rest of your children. I hope you all continue to take tremendous care of yourselves. Uh, keep up that writing, Mr. Scholes. We'll be waiting to read that book. And uh, just, again, thank you so much for sharing a bit of your time this Sunday evening with us, sir. All right. Thank you for calling. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Scholes. You take care. All right. Bye. Good evening. Wow. The context of white supremacy, really courtesy of the Catherine Massey Book Club, Mr. Michael Scholes. Wow. And I have to say that courtesy of the Catherine Massey Book Club, because we would not have been here at all for today's broadcast if I had not read we read multiple books. We did the whole little series together reading Dave Cullen, Columbine, and then we read Sue Klebold's A Mother's Reckoning, all of that. If you had asked me prior to all of that, who is Isaiah Shoals? What's the significance of Isaiah Shoals? Mm. 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 I would have did some thinking and if I wouldn't have been able to cheat, hop on my phone, computer, something, ask a neighbor, run across the street, something. If I couldn't have done any of that, you could have put a dollar on it, a million. I think I would have whiffed like Isaiah shows, Isaiah shows, uh, hmm, I don't, you have to give me some clues. You could have probably given me a few clues and how to still like hmm school shooting hmm we've had so many particularly now like, we've had so many can you narrow it down a little bit school shoot okay school shooting in Colorado you'd had to say school shooting because you couldn't just say Colorado shooting because then it would have still been e can you narrow it down a little bit which is embarrassing like to say Isaiah shows school shooting and you still like e but that would have been me this time. Well, not this time last year, but two years ago. Yep. And at the beginning of 2023. Yes. And even we started reading Columbine because we were reading, studying about Brazil. They were having school shootings and school attacks in Brazil where it was the exact same thing. We gonna do right by Reb Vodka. I said then I was embarrassed. I said, man, how did the people in Brazil they don't even speak English? How did they know all this detail about Columbine? And I don't know. I don't even know who Isaiah Shows is. This thing seems to be 
centrally about white supremacy racism and me I don't know nothing about this huh. that's why we can't read no fiction that today if anything today that's all I have to say about my contempt for fiction we got here today because we only read nonfiction in the Catherine Massey book club Michael we're so ignorant we're so uninformed about everything like man better but pray Mr. Scholes gets let the truth be told you know that would be a plus like immediate get that to the book club immediately if it were published and so needed just to get out information so that more people are aware because I think I suspect there are a lot of black people if you ask them Isaiah Scholes who is that probably wouldn't know him. just taking a gander I s- we had a lot of people in the cows audience who really didn't know a lot of details about this case until we read it so I suspect that's probably widespread happened in happened 25 years ago so younger people psh, that's old they might know I suspect they might know Reb Dill Isaiah show Columbine I said that matter of fact two of the major sources on Columbine they don't even go into the details about what happened to Isaiah Shoals Dave Cullen's work all that up oh, there's a nigra here let's get on do all that is sanitized in Dave Cullen's Columbine and I wrote and asked him about that specifically that's in the archives Sue Klebo insists Dill isn't racist oh but the other major source bowling for Columbine Isaiah Shoals and what happened is not mentioned there at all that's what I mean like especially if you're a younger person like if those are your sources which it is for a lot of people if those are your sources for oh I want to learn see what happened with Columbine you might not even know Isaiah Shoals I don't even think Isaiah Shoals name is mentioned in Bowling for Columbine much less what did they do Negra what they spent all that goofy time talking about Marilyn Manson and gun rights and all the rest of it. What about the racism component to this? Not the goofy cartoon. What about we got a nigra? What about that? Anyway, uh, I was going to play this at the beginning of the broadcast, but timing was a little different when we started things off. This is uh, the late Colorado. State Secretary Vicki Buckley, uh, she spoke at the NRA convention and she worked with the Shoals family. I was going to play this at the beginning and ask Mr. Shoals what his recollection is of uh, Miss Buckley working with the family, but I'll just use it here as our interlude. Uh, this is her commentary from the NRA convention, which was literally days after the Columbine slaughter got lots of attention Charles Charlton Heston was still alive at that time was president of the NRA and gave the big keynote address he introduced Vicki Buckley in fact black female who died about two months she died in July of 1999 I submit that could be stress related to white supremacy racism with this case and just in general but we'll just we'll add her commentary to the record then come back get ready to wrap things up context of white supremacy please join me in welcoming the honorable miss vicki buckley good morning I greet you as Secretary of State of Colorado, and I welcome you to Colorado. I stand before you today as one who has worked closely with the family of Isaiah Scholes. Isaiah was the Columbine High School student who was killed in part because of the color of his skin. I must agree with Isaiah's father, Michael, who has stated that guns are not the issue. Hate what pulls the trigger of violence is the issue.
We are witnesses to new age hate crimes, which we must eliminate if we are to remain the greatest nation on earth. What is a new age hate crime? When our children leave for school without a value system which places a premium on human life, we are accessories to a new age hate crime. Parents, when you raise your children and send them to school without a value system which teaches the difference between right and wrong, then parents, we have committed a new age hate crime. I say to those who run our schools, when you allow our children to graduate who are technologically and functionally illiterate, you have committed a new age hate crime. Because those children are destined to be economically tortured to a death as though, they, as though they had been chained behind a pickup truck as a gentleman in Jasper, Texas. If we allow the language of hate in our homes, when terms such as nigger are freely used when we are laying the foundation for these are new age hate crimes, the language of hate must be challenged. Just, because of, just before a skinhead gunned down a black man on the downtown streets of Denver last year, he asked, are you ready to die, nigger? Columbine eyewitness accounts reveal that just before Isaiah's killers fired, they asked, where is that little nigger? This is the language of hate, and this must go. Context of white supremacy. Listen to supported counter-racist radio in best. If you think the cows is constructive, hit the blog racism-notes.blogspot.com. Racism-notes.blogspot.com. PayPal button in the top right corner. Listener supported counter racist radio. You will see the links for PayPal, Cash App, and Venmo directly beneath the PayPal button. Enormous gratitude to all of the investors who kept us broadcasting for 15 years. Also, you'll see the link for the Amazon wish list uh, under it is listed under Gus T. Renegade. Much obliged for all the folks who have nabbed an item or eight over those 15 years. Hopefully we have been worthy of your time and energy. That's it. We should be here. Uh, so we get tomorrow off. I guess that'll be our one day. We go get a pumpkin latte and celebrate a little bit and then hunker back down. We'll be here Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday on our counter racist grind as we boogie on into autumn 2024. Four, uh, and we should even have lots of, excuse me, lots of reading material uh, as we kick off Autumn 2024. Stay tuned. Other than our break for tomorrow, rolling daily for the rest of the week. Active, not necessarily constructive, but at least today we were constructive, right? Constructive? Constructive? Hopefully attempted parents listen to this broadcast. Uh, I would say share lots of, of reasons. Groups should have a vested interest. This particular broadcast attempted parents, true crime, cows, book club participants, uh, Columbine fanboys and fangirls, big demographics uh, should be vested uh, in this broadcast. I hadn't really thought about that. I guess Mr. Scholes doesn't do a lot of broadcasts. This will be one I will stand by my work. Mr. Scholes, I guess, does get a number of interview requests to, you know, want to come and talk, have him in documentaries and such. Um, the vetting process, I sent him the program that we did with Jeff Cass, who literally wrote the book Columbine. I sent him that broadcast and the folks who work with him help handle his interview requests. Listen to that broadcast. And they said, wow, we'll have to give it to you. You did your research. Indeed. Indeed. That again, why reading nonfiction 
more important than watching television. And one thing I will say, this is kind of, a, I guess, or a major promotion for the Catherine Massey Book Club. I do, as the facilitator, make an effort to not be lazy. I don't just show up and, you know, especially since we're going to listen to the audio book and just yeah, I'll prop my feet up and, you know, try not to fall asleep. I try to be active. We're going to read a book, be actively engaged, highlight, maybe do a teaspoon of research in advance about who wrote this book. What is the subject matter? What is the relevant context or other important information to help better understand why this material is relevant to our understanding of counter racism really we're not just reading books for the ha ha ho ho whatever that was a great plot I like those characters all of this is supposed to be about the science counter racism replacing white supremacy with justice that's why we're reading this oh yes that helps me stay focused so hopefully that has been exemplified maybe increasingly so in my 12 years of facilitating the Catherine Massey book club. But I mean, hey, sometimes literally the characters leap off of the page. We've had authors from some of the books that we've read uh, on the book club before. But I mean, hey, this is probably one of one to read about a slaughter of this magnitude and then have one of the victims come on. That is important though, at least in my view, the Kyle Velasquez, I didn't know, you know, anything or the details about this case. If you'd asked me before, I would have probably said, you know, I guess like 10 or I would maybe just said it was 13 white people got killed in Columbine and whatever. And like, what? Isaiah shows what Nick run to this. Wow. Okay. So it was 12 white people killed. And then Isaiah shows, that's the way I would have, described it no when we were reading Dave Cullen I said man do you think I think Kyle Velasquez is non-white that would be two non-white people killed in the library e that is a little bit different thought process for me in fact that reinforces what Mr. Scholes said they were hunting Isaiah Scholes I could believe that because you got a cluster of non-white people in the library. This is a school and a town that is a racially restricted region. I said that when we read the book, you didn't even have that many non-white people in the school. And you go and kill two of them in the library? I said, I said that and then I asked other people, like, do you all think Kyle Velasquez would be accepted as non-white? Then uh, Isaiah Scholl's siblings they're homies with Kyle at eh, nigger lover, you're out of here, and you're non-white to boot, out of here. I could totally see that. I could totally see that. Cowardly race soldiers to boot? At minimum, the science of counter-racism to non-white people killed in the library by these cowardly racists. Add that one. That was one I'm glad I was able to Remember, like, oh, yeah, that is important for a lot of reasons. Uh, Also, the toilet paper. I mentioned yesterday on the compensatory call-in. They do pranks. You can do a busy box. I mentioned that offhand because that that was mentioned specifically in Dave Cullen's Columbine. The missions. We're going to go out and do pranks on the neighborhood, terrorize them, put a banana in their tailpipe and sugar in the gas tank, and do prank phone calls with pornography and all the rest of it, and do the busy box so the phone, it's busy when someone tries to call you, and it's busy when you pick up the phone and try to call somebody else. Toilet papering houses and the firecrackers. We read about, oh, in fact, I started highlighting, dang, is pranks, is that a part of white culture? Because it came up so frequently, even in the Jeff Dahmer book, he and his dad 
pranks. Mr. Scholl's property was toilet papered before Columbine and he got a police record of this? Then they put the swastikas up in the new house that was being constructed after Columbine? Wow. Who was prosecuted? Did anybody get prosecuted for that? Wouldn't wouldn't the whole town be outraged like we're trying to move on and heal from all this and then you're going to do like Wow. Just wow. Um I hope he gets the book with as much detail as possible. Let the truth be told. Maybe we can help speak it into existence. Uh let the truth be told. Let the truth be told. Let the truth be told. For Isaiah Shoals. Also, the tidbit about the limousine that Isaiah Shoals was going to go to prom. And there, I remember, I think it was in Dave Cullen's book, and it may have been in Jeff Cass's book as well, that there was uh, there was a suggestion that they originally were thinking about doing this at the prom and that someone had found propane tanks in the kitchen area during the prom and that there was some sort of graffiti or something predicting that something was going to happen either that weekend or the prom or shortly after. And the bomb, I think prom was the 17th that weekend. And then the bombing uh, and shooting took place uh, on the 20th. So as he said, just days apart, days apart. Uh, but all of that, like I think uh, for this broadcast, uh, there were listeners like, wow, Michael Scholes. That's, Wow, that's amazing. Wow, maybe even historic. I don't know, even though I will say I didn't find tons of interviews with Michael Scholes before. So Columbine being what it is and he was able to hang out with us graciously for at least 60 minutes might be when people who do not normally listen to the context of white supremacy might listen to this program just because of their Columbine fascination. I can say this, oh man, you do not have Columbine discussions where racism is this flagrant, generally speaking. It's mental health, brain issues, depression, bullying, gun violence, blame the parents, video games, it's a long list, but Columbine being specifically focused on racism, white supremacy. In fact, even two of Gus's favorite exclusive concepts that things I say want racially restricted region. That seems like an integral aspect of all of this, that she didn't have a whole lot of non-white people there. The fact, there aren't a lot of Isaiah Shoals here. There aren't a lot of Michael Shoals here. And we are not wanted even before Columbine there aren't even that many non-white people in the school and then you go kill two of them in the library racially restricted region even the school was made for white people in the Denver area to get away from the negras in the make my day state gun laws What's the other concept uh, of gun? Well, it should be white people do not care about children. Matter of fact, now that I think of it, it's a whole lot of them because that for sure would be one, right? The school shootings, that's what made me start saying that. That would have to be one for sure. Yes, white people kill for fun. How could that not be on the list? Like I said, there's so many of them. I can't even look. That's... That's what they said at the very end before they went to go start the killing. They said, they wrote down, in fact, they did the video and they said, have fun. Wrote that in the diary. Have, they intended this as a bombing to kill about 500 to 600 people. Have fun. Many of them, their friends. Have fun.
white people kill for fun. And it's lots of, you know, things that are very, what, what does it mean to be white? My goodness, my goodness, that's all over. The other concept where I said it's so many, one of the others I got to get in, Mr. Scholl said we got all these aristocrats, powerful white people in the region who helped cover this up. I for years have said one of the things that makes white supremacy racism so powerful is that it's not just one race soldier. That race soldier will get help, can expect help from all the other local, maybe even international individuals classified as white. And you see that in so many. That's what we're reading about in the book club right now. Individuals classified as white around the globe conspiring to murder Patrice Lumumba and then lie about having done so. Do that sort of thing all that form like Voltron. This is just an example on a local level where he said you had all these powerful white people's law enforcement and FBI officials and attorneys and school officials conspiring to cover up. The Supreme Court judge in the state of Colorado conspiring to cover up, destroy evidence. What's the primary method of practicing racism, white supremacy? The science of counter-racism deception even that's why I say that's why we get correct use of terms racism white supremacy that helps mitigate minimize the deception correct use of terms but yes, anyway, for all the people who are not normal cows listeners who might have stumbled in like, what is going on? Michael Schultz and all that. You can go back so you can hear Dr. Angeline Spalding Flowers. She's been on the program twice. We talked about Columbine in both of those. She wrote a whole book about school shootings, which again is amazing. And the premise, the reason we haven't made more progress, we don't identify, hey, Reb vodka the transgender shooter at the new covenant school in tennessee parkland sandy hook the reason we haven't made more progress cult 45 these are people classified as white and that's not who we like to think of as a criminal we like to think of michael shows as a criminal Anyway, uh, let's see. Forming like Voltron. It is not going to be one race soldier. Might be a whole town. Might be a whole country. Might be a whole planet of race soldiers who conspire to lynch and do you in. I'll see if uh, Lauren has a quick thought. Any of the other folks, especially any of the folks who are with us for the book club to be able to, if you had even told me you are going to do a very important interview with Michael Scholes. If you had told me this in 2020, Michael Scholes, Michael Scholes, Michael Scholes. You sure that's his name? Scholes. Scholes. Spell it. <laughs> we would have to start there like Scholes. Like the blanket? Scholes. Spell it. <laughs> Reading is what really the embarrassment of that is you really did not know anything about Columbine? Nope. I could have maybe got the date right. That's about it. Like, I would have had to stumble and fumble. Like, I think it was in April, but uh, it was on Hitler's birthday. (sighs) April, I think, something, 90s. eh. Reading more important than watching television. Non-fiction. And major event, 9-11, January 6th, major historical events. You should recently read one, but we didn't do that. You should probably read several 
really good, especially if they in any way related to racism, white supremacy, which everything is, 9-11, January 6th, this, Katrina, everything is, get several books and study. About anything that you think your children or grandchildren might one day say, hey, Grandma, you were around when Katrina happened. What do you remember? Psh, saddle up. We will bake cookies and chat for an afternoon. Same thing with the school shootings. They, hey, you around, Columbine? What do you remember? Psh. Same thing. Saddle up. We will make peach smoothies and talk about Isaiah Shoals. Maybe we'll have the book to lean on. Let the truth be told. Any hoodles. Let's see. We had uh, Lauren. She asked several questions. He even said, yes, white people are kind of dangerous. Man, got to be afraid. Hey, (laughs) father of Isaiah Shoals. What else can I say? His son is still buried in Colorado. Isaiah still buried in Colorado. Man, uh, let's see. Uh, Lauren, did you have uh, thoughts, commentary you wanted to share? What we heard from Mr. Michael Scholes joining us live from Tennessee. Um, yes, sir, I did. A couple of things were very noticeable to me when he was speaking. Um, he said uh, there were several concepts, ideas, phrases that kept being repeated. Um, coming together was one of them. Um, there was a lot of talk about hate. Um, I, I did notice the white friends, um, blinders that was used a couple of times. And he also said, uh, brothers and sisters. I think he said we're brothers and sisters in the human race. Um, that sounds nice. I don't think it's true. And even if it was true, white people don't think that. And I think we really need to understand that about them. Um, yeah, th- those were the things that I really knew. But I'm, I'm glad he came on the broadcast. Me too. Super thankful. Lots of metaphors. Absolutely. Um, Mr. Fuller talks about that, like we're not all human family, human race, brothers and sisters. That is not the system of white supremacy racism at all. Uh, It'd be nice if that were the case, but no. That's how you have all that conspiring and lying to conceal evidence about what happened in this case. And really, why all this continues to happen. Like, I was stunned, like, totally when I was going through to get the journal, because I remember this being a big, just like with Columbine, we don't want to inspire and blah, 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 and all that and copycats and all the rest of it. There was a big kerfuffle about whether or not they were going to release the journal for the Nashville shooter who again, white transgender, I think biologically born female, but identified as a male. They, the newspaper, the Tennessee Star, they did make the journal available for download uh, via PDF. And it's right there, like I said, PDF page 39. Uh, and I knew Columbine was going to be referenced because I remember seeing the video when this shooting happened. The clothing, the attire looked just like Reb specifically. And others noted that as well because there's so many Columbine fans where they were like, wow, this, you know, is probably another one of those Columbiners. And then to have that in that, like, that's why I'm for transparency. Like, let's see, because that was the reasoning given. No, we don't need the basement tapes. No, we don't want to make that public. It'll just inspire copycats. Well, we burned it. And now you still had 25 years of copycats. They weren't even born when all this happened and you still got 25 years of copycats. So let's have transparency to see all the failures, 
all the points where this could have been stopped, but no, because these are white people. Oh, no, no. We don't treat them like Leroy, you know, expel them from school and prosecute them. Oh, no, no, we don't ruin young Reb and Dill's life. Anyway, <clears throat> release transparency. That's what Mr. Schultz said, transparency. Let's learn, study as much as we can, really. What does it mean to be white? In fact, man, this journal alone has some tidbits. Now, it's more of that scrawl, it's handwritten, uh, and all of that. Uh, and I could see some reading this and saying, oh, this reminds me of Dill and talking about love and confusion and all the contempt for gender. You see all that, the gender confusion uh, in the text. But like I said, you get to the that part way down that I read. Want to impress Dill, Vodka, want to make them proud. Let's see and see if I can find it. Lots of I want to die and I want to die, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. Which is the same sort of talk that was in Reb and Dill's journals. The part where Columbine was mentioned, that became so. And there we go. Okay, so this is on page 14. The Columbine portion that I read, that's on page 39. There are a total of 45 PDF pages. And there are two journal pages per page. So even with that, that means there's a total of about 90 loose leaf sheets of pages in this journal. Uh, so this is on page uh, 14, PDF page 14. Brown girls have the nicest skin, especially yours. Rather, to touch it, I'd die. Then in brackets directly beneath that, I hate my thoughts three exclamation marks that's on page 14 uh, if that means anything to you from the New Covenant School Shooter in Tennessee this is from 2023 uh, you can download the whole PDF of the journal via the Tennessee Star I'm again glad that they did make it available and there was a big kerfuffle about whether or not this should be published that said, we'll be here Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday of the coming week. One day off to cut loose and enjoy the autumn. Uh, hopefully constructive. Again, gratitude, condolences to the whole show's family. So thankful we were able to speak with them this Sunday evening. Now, we could have been sitting around munching chicken wings watching black people get brain damage for tackle football or whatever else people do on a late Sunday evening or yeah Sunday evening beginning of autumn whatever else people would be doing maybe getting ready to go back to a week of school or what have you but hopefully learn a little bit if you don't know about Columbine learn and certainly speak with your offspring about safety at school speak in fact if you're thinking about having children this is something to chew on food metaphor sobriety would be best under conditions of white supremacy vodka substance abuse was a part of Columbine underage drinking even vodka and rib creator we ask that you help us remain patient with other black people victims of white supremacy we ask that you help us remain patient with ourselves remind us to demonstrate the highest levels of black self-respect at all times in all places each and every time we are in contact with another black person it has been time replace white supremacy with justice immediately no name calling no gossiping for Isaiah Shoals no throwaway 
offspring. Cow signing out. Thanks all for tuning in. Nigga, you so brainwashed. I'm a victim, no brother. Problem. You're a victim. Yeah. I'm a up. victim of 400 years of conditioning. Shut up. The man has programmed my conditioning. Mm -hmm. Even my conditioning has been conditioned. Yeah.